That was what we learned in our midweek Lenten series is this sign for compassion. It's my heart to your heart. Compassion, the word that's most apt to describe Jesus in all the Gospels. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. Let's start with those first words. Your Lord and teacher, your boss, your, your, your leader, your, your O oh, captain, my captain, your coach, your professor. There's a particular relationship being described here, higher and lower, better and mediocre, important and cannon fodder, right? There are so many scenes in movies that show the difference between the important and the cannon fodder. Though I think, um, for me, Magneto from the X-Men movie says it best. As one of his lieutenants gets ready to charge into battle, Magneto puts out his hand to stop him, turns and said to him, says to him, in chess, the pawns go first. Those are the rules of engagement. Those were the rules when the American Revolution broke out. You can only attack the foot soldiers. The generals up on horsebacks are not appropriate targets of war. As shown in the movie The Patriot, one of the reasons America won the revolution is because we didn't treat the British generals as above the fray of war like they were supposed to be. If you don't understand the material, Go see a TA or get a tutor. Professors don't have time for students. And if you're feeling sick, find someone who cares. Professors aren't your mothers. At least that's what I was told when I went to college. Jesus is more important than everyone else. The disciples all ought to be arrested first while someone whisks Jesus away to safety. If it's not a boss fight, it's someone else's battle. Jesus is above all that. Or at least, that's what society tells us, right? Jesus teaches us something entirely different. He says, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet... There's this scene in Remember the Titans that I love, football movie. The coach has this big lineman standing in front of the team, trying to use the lineman's enthusiasm to help motivate the rest of the team. But the conversation turns serious for a moment. And the coach says, what about you? Are you going to college? And the 300-pound lineman says, no, not me, coach. I ain't a brainiac. Now, A stereotypical coach doesn't care if their kids succeed academically as long as they aren't academically suspended. The trope of jocks taking the easy classes, getting away with near-failing grades, and having their coaches intervene only when it would hurt the team shows up way too much in the real world. But this coach, this coach comes up and says in a whisper, now son, if you don't go to college, It's not going to be because you're not qualified. So I want you to bring me your test scores at the end of every week, and we'll go over them together. I love that scene. Because in my head, I think that's a Jesus moment. Or there's this scene in a video from a confirmation curriculum I like. The video is titled, Why Did Jesus Go to Hell?, And in it, they're trying to explain God's love. And they explain it like the love of a parent for a sick child. Now, when when you're sick as a child and all gross and disgusting and food is not staying where it's supposed to, any sane person would get away from you and only approach you in a full containment suit with a biohazard bucket to capture all the lunch your body is returning. But a parent the one who controls your entire life and to whom you must answer in all things, comes in, gets down on the floor, and scrubs the gut-wrenching mess up, and then ensures that you are all comfortable, 
and gives you a kiss on the forehead. God as parent is always a beautiful image, even if all parents fall short in some way, because a parent at its best is the boss who is also your caretaker, the king who is also a servant. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, if I, your parent, have cleaned up your vomit, if I, your coach, have helped you succeed academically, what makes Jesus my God isn't what makes anyone else a God. Those other so-called gods live high and mighty in some faraway place, like the gods um, that they'd show in the movie Thor, Love, and Thunder. They live in succulent resplendence, feasting and dining and celebrating. And they look down on the people believing that, the, that they are suffering for their God is their only purpose. And like vain Thor in the first movie, they only enter the muck of humanity for pleasure and entertainment. What makes Jesus my God is that he stoops down. He whom I'm unworthy to stoop down and remove the sandals from his feet stoops down and washes my feet. He whom I was created by dies for me. He whom I owe my life to gives his life that I may live. As Paul says, he was in the form of God, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. In seminary, I was taught that the good news, the gospel, is always this. What God does for me. In any sermon, the good news is God plus verb, plus me. Jesus loves me. God helps me in times of trouble. The Holy Spirit sustains my soul. This is my body given for you. What makes Jesus my God is that Jesus is always for me, for us, for the world. Jesus is never far off and above and far away, but always here, stooped down, ready to serve. Jesus is the starving street rat who gives his bread to two hungry children. Jesus is the priest who donates gold candelabras to the desperate Jean Valjean. Jesus is the mom who cleans up the vomit. Jesus is the son who gives his parent a sponge bath. Jesus is the one who meets my need today, tomorrow, and always. Jesus is the one who loves me to the end, even if he knows I'll betray him. If I, your Lord and teacher, have loved you, you also should love one another. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? Love one another. Be like Jesus. Serve each other. Be a good Christian. Be what Luther describes. A Christian is a perfectly free Lord, subject to none, and at the same time, a Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant, subject to all. But we know it's not simple. It's not easy. And so tonight we practice. We practice serving. We practice being a Christian, loving like Jesus. But we also do something else. We also practice letting our humanity be seen by those who serve us. And sometimes I find that's just as hard. Not just to love, but to let yourself be loved. To let your dirty, nasty, grungy feet be touched by someone else and cleaned. To let them see those feet and smell those feet and care for them. To admit that you can't do it all yourself and you need help. To be vulnerable. Or as I heard in a prayer this week, we pray, God, give us the strength and compassion of Jesus. 
God, give you the compassion to love and the strength to be vulnerable and loved in return. Partly because we don't always want to love and partly because we don't always want to be seen when we need love. And even most of those we love, we don't want them to see our messes. So tonight we practice. We're not practicing some small form of love, one that is only available at this moment or only in existence because the people here, the people that we are serving and being served by are the ones that we already love. Now tonight, we're practicing saying the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. We are learning to open our hearts to love the Jesus in the one who serves us. And we are practicing opening our hearts to serve the Jesus in the one who needs our love. Rather than learning to be superhumans, what we are learning tonight is to step aside and let the good news, the love of God in Jesus Christ, come alive through us. As we wash and are washed, I invite you to say to one another that Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. So that whether you are washing someone else or they are washing you, you are meeting Christ and discovering that you are loved. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you, inside and out for better or for worse, today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to like if you heard good news and subscribe to stay up to date on the latest message. Peace be with you.